So I also wanted to check out <laughs> this amazing clip actually, courtesy of the Black Millionaires account on think on Twitter that features Gail King talking about this weird interaction that she had with a man that she was dating, where he basically asked her for some money um to pay his child support. He paid it back on time, on the agreed time, and but then she says it never made she never looked him the same way. And I find this really interesting because it's a very different way that some women like to act about money online, especially the ones that talk about dating all the time, right? They, a lot of them talk about, oh yeah, I want a man that makes a certain amount. They got to be doing this for me, doing that for me. But then the moment the roles are switched, suddenly they speak like this, where it's kind of like she's almost holding this thing over this guy's head. And it's like, I don't kind of understand why, because this woman's like in the top 1% of earners in the world, right? She's probably worth millions and millions of flipping dollars. So really and truly, what, what guy are you going to meet that's going to be like matching your level of money anyway, especially at that kind of age that she is, right? She's single and she looks like she might be in her 60s or 70s. It, obviously, the older you get, you'd imagine your, your options start to kind of dwindle, especially if you've got loads of money and you're big, you know, famous and shit. It's just going to be hard to kind of, you know, meet somebody that kind of matches your kind of financial status. So I find it odd that she was judging the guy for that. But let me just play the clip so you can hear what she says, because I find this clip really, really funny. You think you could lend me four thousand mm. dollars? And I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> ask what it's for. He said, yeah, it was for uh, a, a child support issue. The fact that she said, oh, God, and the fact that she asked him what it was for, for me is really, really, really bad for on the pod. I think in general, especially when it comes to friends, the moment you have to start lending people money to like, you know, live or to whatever it may be, especially those type of things, it unfortunately does do irreparable damage to the relationship, especially if one person's up and one person's down. But I also have a weird, I don't know if this makes any sense, but there's also a part of me that thinks that not a lot of people get the opportunity to make money. It's just not one of those things that is granted to everybody. Not, you know, not everybody in the world is going to have the ability to become a millionaire. It's just not within their destiny um, for whatever reason, right? Maybe because of the way capitalism is, the way the fucking banking systems are, societal, racial, economic, whatever it may be. We don't all have the ability to make like unlimited amounts of money. So I sometimes think to myself, maybe a way to kind of rewrite that balance is that some of us get to make a lot of money so that we can help other people. I, don't, I, I know that sounds kind of woo woo and whatever but maybe that is the only option that's available like some of us get to make so much money that there's no other way that we can spend it we have to kind of help people and, and helping people is kind of something that we kind of get joy from so I think if you're that person and you've been blessed you know especially like someone like a Gail King right to be the a best friend of flipping Oprah and shit which is basically a meal ticket in its own because you know I don't I'm not too sure people would really care about Gail King if she wasn't Oprah's best friend aka lover whatever it may be but if that's the case you really should be a little bit more charitable with your P and not be so judgmental as if like you know this was all destined to you either because surely the Oprah friendship is definitely part of the reason why you are where you're at in some regard yes of course her own work ethic definitely added to it but there should be some level of humility around it really should be a little bit but let's read the details because maybe the details might give further explanation as to why she was so exasperated and annoyed when the guy asked her for money so let's see here the articles here courtesy of new york post it says her love um doesn't cost a thing da, da, da. when it comes to dating girl king is like most single girls looking for love she's often disappointed there's also a part of me that thinks if you're a woman of a certain age surely like love should be the last thing you're looking for Maybe it should be companionship. Maybe it should be like, you know, just someone to kind of chill with in your later years of your life. Really, should you be dating for love, really? You're like 60, 70 years old. Like, hang it up, man. What, you're going to be busting your pussy open at 60? Like, you're going to be twerking and she has sick. Like, really? Like, what, you want, you, want, you want to celebrate Valentine's Day at fucking 80? What's the point? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to be dead in a couple of years. <laughs> just hang it up. Um... The star of CBS This Morning recently sat down for an interview with the Pivot podcast and discussed her dating life with hosts Ryan Clark and Channing Crowder and Fred Taylor. 
She's 69. Oh, she's 69. Okay, cool. Oh, she's 69. Hey. Um, who's not been in a significant public relationship since her divorce in 1993. She got divorced in 1993 and she's still looking for love. Yo, babe, maybe it's love is not for you. Maybe get yourself a couple of toy boys like Cher does, right? Someone to maybe knock your fucking back in, right? Or to knock your back in, right? To kind of be like a a sexual fucking chiropractor, right? In some regards. But looking for love, come on, bro. 993. She she got divorced from a guy called Bill Bumpus. Bill bumped her, innit? All right? Bill bumped her, cool. Um, a Connecticut assistant attorney general revealed that her level of success and fame have often hurt her chances of finding a suitable match well duh there are women in their 20s women in their early 30s women in their 40s who are finding it difficult to find a mate when they're super successful right when they are type a driven um you know just super smart and clocked in and dialed in imagine how hard it is to find somebody that's a alive right you have to find somebody that number one is alive number two has the money to keep up with you and the life and the kind of you know the lifestyle to kind of travel around the world and all that sort of stuff is r literally impossible <laughs> what's difficult is that most people say oh you're so intimidating says gail king right um somebody said to me once gail look at your shoes look at your bag look at your coat you're friends with oprah um a guy looks at you and says i can't compete with that but my thing is it's not a matter of competing i'm looking for someone to compete I'm not looking for someone to compete. Okay, she's not looking for someone to compete, but then she gets surprised when the guy she picks asks her for four grand. Bro, four grand for you is probably like $4. Don't don't be annoying. Just give him the four grand and keep it moving, man. Let him keep blowing your back out. It's not a big deal. Honestly, bro. Why is she, why is she bothered about... Why are you even taking it back too? That's how you know she's tight, right? Gail King's probably worth millions. The guy's just some regular dude. He's down bad. He needs some money to pay for his child support. And she lends him 4K and then she asks for it back. <laughs> and she takes it too. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. When you're rich and you got money, that's what you should do. You should really be very, very frugal. I think most, that's what I said, most rich people are usually the most tight, right? The most tight fisted. They don't really lend too easily, but I guess that's how you keep your money. But imagine being worth millions in your you know chasing somebody for 4k 4k must be like it's not even four dollars it must be like 40 cents um you want somebody who has a sense of humor who's very secure who's not intimidated by whatever at all cost and that just sees you for you king who shares two children with their ex a daughter kirby and a son called william jr is also on the prowl imagine being 69 and being on the prowl honestly man have some dignity have some grace like get yourself a toy boy like everybody else and shut the fuck up looking for love at 69 is insane i went on a date and i was really excited very excited about it we'd gone on out maybe two months and then he said he really needed to talk okay to be fair to be fair to be fair to be fair to her this guy sounds like a fucking psycho you're dating somebody for two months and you start asking for money <laughs> okay i kind of take it back uh, auntie girl i take it back i take it back maybe you're in the right you're dating the guy for two months and he asks you for money <laughs> that's a bit wild um we don't have to be two months and then he said he really needs to talk to me whenever somebody says this to you by the way people that are listening to me you will know this whenever anyone says to you i really need to talk to you <laughs> nothing good comes out of that it's always something always a request you're always going to be out of money out of time um you're going to have a headache something's going to happen you're going to you're going to be drained that's never a good request i need to talk to you he wanted to have a private conversation <laughs> away from away from oprah he was like Look, don't tell oprah <laughs> the guy was like don't tell oprah <laughs> don't tell auntie winfrey please <laughs> <laughs> let's open another chat let's not do it in the group chat don't tell oprah <laughs> do you think you could lend me 4k honestly owing 4k in child support and then asking the woman that you're beating to pay it for you is the blackest most niggery thing i've seen if this is a white guy i'm gonna be shocked this sounds like a nigger thing to do this sounds like a niggery nignog nigger thing to do to ask a woman that you've been dating for two months to lend you money to pay child support is fucking insane this guy 
deserves to be pushed in front of a train. When Oprah 70 learned of the request, her response to her best friend of decades was quite epic. What did she say? You know what Oprah said? God, I would have felt better if he had said 40,000. Huh. I was so crushed because she was somebody who was making, you know, six figure successful. And when I said, you know what? Could I ask for what it was for? Yeah, it was for a child support issue. And <laughs> it was for a child support issue. <laughs> it's for a rent issue a banking issue a car issue i love that word this definitely has to be a black guy a child support issue <laughs> and a pay and a payment on some furniture what he put a furniture on klana he clanned some furniture so he put the because the four thousand is a really interesting figure some of it is to pay, to pay child support and some of it is to pay for the chairs in his kitchen and shit that he put on Klarna. Yo, this guy's a psycho. Um, and, um, and to pay for some furniture. And I said to myself, oh God, this is just getting worse. While King did loan the guy the money, the thrill was gone. The relationship didn't last much longer because she didn't feel the same. So in answer to your question, is it difficult to date? Um... It's difficult to date. She says, yes, I think so. King still has some hope that she'll find a soulmate one day and shared her dating preferences on the pivot. Why are you looking for a soulmate at 60? Honestly, women's idea of love is so, especially American women, they're so Disneyfied, isn't it? The Disneyfication of relationships and love with American women is fucking interesting. Number one, you're 69. Look at your wig. Look at your fucking wig. Look at where the fringe is. Look at what the parting is. Like, look at that wig. That wig, and she's looking for a love, a soulmate. Auntie, come on, bro. Just get somebody to knock you down, to hold you down, right? Um, Make your heart beat, you know, make you sweat and shit, right? Make you go, ah, ah, all that good stuff, whatever. But love, soulmate, at 69 years old, and you're a fucking multi-millionaire, um, you know, in the, mo in the high multis, super famous. Who are you going to find out there that's what? So you're so essentially, in a weird way, she's hoping to find somebody. She's hoping that some guy out there that's eligible is going to his his wife is going to die. That's what he's hoping for. He's hoping, she's secretly hoping some guy out there, wife dies before she dies so that she can take him. <laughs> that's what she wants. She wants some eligible batch, some, some eligible old dude out there who's in a really loving relationship a really loving long marriage you know f five plus decades he she's hoping secretly that that wife dies in a skiing accident somewhere right and that she can go and then you know comfort the husband well but i mean comfort i mean little rub and tug and then she can kind of take him and then boom they're together because who are you finding at that age 69 years old come on woman and it's not like she's 69 and she's like you know down She's like a she's been like a big woman for a long time. She's been an auntie for ages. So it's not even like she's like a fun 69. Do you know what I mean? She's not doing any lines. She's not going to the club. She's not really drinking, drinking, or staying up. Let, let me what, what's like do you know what I mean? Like, like what what are you doing then? You're just going on walks. <laughs> You're playing Sudoku. Like, allow it, man. Allow it. Um I really am attracted to men of colour. Men of colour, hmm. She likes red, blue, yellow, green. I just am. I love how a black man says motherfucker. Yo, sh Gail, Auntie Gail is thirsty. Auntie Gail is gagging. I love how a black man says motherfucker and baby. <laughs> Auntie Gail wants to get her back blown out badly. God damn it, Auntie, man. Have some fucking... I know an auntie, it's his grandmother, isn't it? Like, nanny, man. Nana, Nana King. Nana Gail, you need to chill, Nana. Nana, you need to chill. You need to chill. <laughs> There's something about the way a black man says it. I'm just attracted to that. They got to have something else too, though. What, what really matters, what really is most attracted to me is a sense of humor. Come on, get out of here. You just said you like a guy that says motherfucker. A guy that says motherfucker is not going to be doing Eddie Murphy routines in the bedroom. He's just going to be laying down pipe. That's what she wants, which is okay, but let's not conflate the two, right? 
Um, I want someone that makes me laugh. No, you don't. You want someone that makes you scream. <laughs> Just say what you mean, man. What really is more attractive to me is sense of humor, kindness. You always have to, you always get me with kindness. Um, so if you would ask, please, Gail, can you lend me £4,000? £4,000? Maybe that would have helped, wouldn't it? Hey, Gail, could you please lend me $4,000? Could you please cash up me $4,000 for my child support and just some tiny, tiny chairs? <laughs> <laughs> just a small furniture issue i have <laughs> holy shit i like to see how they interact with other people someday um somebody you can talk to so, well huh look at the, look at this girl look at look this woman's life i like to see how they interact with other people somebody you can take to the white house and the backyard barbecue what who is this guy who is this man that she wants to meet at 69 she wants to meet a guy that is independent has his own money is kind has got a dick on him can make her laugh he can be taken to the white house he's white house ready he's barbecue ready <laughs> he says motherfucker <laughs> like what more does she want what did like he what he, he's got a fucking he's a what he used to be a quarterback in fucking college or something like he could bench 225 10 times like what more do you want bro this list is fucking crazy <laughs> okay somebody to the white house at the barbecue proper grammar really matters to me and somebody who can make you laugh so he has to be well read he has to be well read right he has to be single so maybe his partner died but he can't be grieving right he has to be single but not grieving he has to be rich but not like playboy rich he has to be cultured but not like you know too niggery he has to be <laughs> like these requirements are insane king also explained that while her ex-husband did have many of the qualities she was looking for he was sadly a cheater who is this bill bumpers that she was married to i want to see what he looks like what does bill bumpers look like who is this bill bumpers that she, that cheated on her was that him he's young bro is that bill bumpers how old is he he looks too young to be wow okay gail i see where you're going now i see where girl king's going this is her vibe all right now we see what girl king's on because this man looks like he's in his like 40s now he must be like 40 or 50 fucking hell girl king bill bumpers was bumping in it eh? yeah that fucking bald head right up on her head just <clears throat> you know what i mean bill bumpers was letting that tang fly fair play bill fair fucking play look look at how she used to smile have you ever seen girl king smile like that before that's what she wants she wants to smile like that have you ever seen girl king smile like that? look at look at look at that smile look at that and compare it to the new york times look look what she look look at that <laughs> look at that that's the face of a woman who had to lend some guy she was seeing for two months four grand like fuck you know but when bill had her look bill had her grinning from teeth from from ear to ear bro she was smiling she had her arms out neck showing a little bit of fucking nanny cleavage there right a little bit of nanny cleavage right she probably walked down the fucking aisle you know the corridors of the white house just smelling like fucking cocoa bar and shea bar and shit right just glistening you know, smelling like a, you know that granny smell when they put those perfumes and shit on, right? She had her fucking pantyhose on and shit, just shaking that little money maker down the fucking White House corridors, right? Because you know that tang is tanging as well, right? She probably got a big wagon on her, Girl King, right? Just just waving that thing in the air like a fucking flag. You know what I mean? That shit was not on half mass, that was full mass. That shit was up in the air. Bill Bumpus walking by her as well, with his little fucking pocketbook out there, like they were living the life. And now look at her. Now look at her. Now she's out here lending guys she's dated f for four months, 4K, looking just miserable. Bags under her eyes, wig, you know, wig is completely twisted the other way. <laughs> she's going through it, man. She needs some help. Fair play. I take it all back. Give, give Girl King everything. Give her some love, man. She needs to smile again. Girl King hasn't smiled like this since fucking 2005. You know I mean, she's not been smiling like this since 2005. <laughs> she's been out here fucking, 
you know, holding fucking Oprah's pockets, right? She'd been holding Oprah's pockets like they're in prison. Oprah's walking around the yard and Girl King standing there holding her pockets. She wants to hold someone else's pockets now. She <laughs> she wants to hold somebody else's pockets. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, Girl King. Okay. Oh, fucking K. Let's see how that rolls. But I think we can all profess that we've been in situations like that where unfortunately, you know, the money situation does kind of add a different complex to things. Um, I remember there was a time when I used to grow up um, in an area that I used to live in and ends and stuff. And there was these two boys I was like really close with. Um, but you know, in boy, boy groups, there's always like a side thing going on. I don't know if you guys are the same thing, but there's always like drama that you're not aware of. So we were all good friends, all three of us. They, they were the boys I used to kind of go, the names are Brian and Claudio, right? Two of my like best friends that I kind of went to school with, Brian and Claudio. And um, we used to always kind of go to like play football together. And then we always go to like Rumford and Lakeside and Trocadero and, you know, Braintree and I don't know, all these weird places to go and try and pick up girls and shit, right? It was fucking brutal. It was awful because I was so bad at it when I was younger. It was fucking terrifying, but I do really... I am thankful for that time because it kind of helped me kind of get over that fear of talking to people, especially girls and shit. And I think when I got older, it definitely put me in good stead because even I didn't have much money, you know, whatever, I didn't look a certain way. I always had like good quote unquote riz because of that kind of schooling early on where we would go every weekend and go pick up girls and stuff or attempt to, right? And try and get their numbers. But in a boy's groups of friend, in a in a boy friendship groups, I'm sure you're aware of it. There's always little dramas, little issues going on between other people that you're not aware of. So later on in life, right? Later on in life, you know what happened? I found out later on that basically Brian in our group, the boy Brian, he was basically the one that had the most money because he's, I think basically, basically, you know, in ends, if if one parent works a full-time job, <laughs> that person's rich, right? But I guess he had two parents that had two full-time jobs, so he had loads of money. And um and yeah, I think he was an I think it was just him and his brother. So, you know, whatever. So for whatever reason, Brian and Cloudy got had got into a situation where they were lending each other clothes, which I never understood. That's a that's I've never gone that far. Like I've never gone that far. The clothes and shoes thing, it's never been my thing. I've I think I've bought a pair of like old shoes from somebody. Oh here, can can I buy these old air maxes from me that you don't wear anymore? But I've never borrowed stuff from people. Like it's just odd. But anyway, they got into this weird deal where they're borrowing clothes from each other and if anything i think the clothes thing i'm not gonna lie if when i think back to it i think that's what led to the breakup of the friendship group it was never the same again because there was a situ there were situations where i think i've seen i think you guys have seen it in skits that drewski does and stuff where like the boy's got on a jacket he's talking to a girl and then the the, the guy who lent the jacket to him is like coming over there um that's my coat you know that's my coat right don't get that shit dirty we're talking to this girl that kind of stuff there's that kind of dirty macking that goes on with guys where they're kind of jealous that you're talking to the girl that they want and then they try and make it obvious that they lent you the, you know it's just odd stuff so i think that sort of situation is what led to that our group breaking up i'm, I'm not gonna lie that weird like and again i i just don't understand that thing like the money thing fair enough we all get into some sort of like financial difficulty um, uh, emergency comes up whatever that's one thing but being in a situation where you're borrowing clothes and shoes from people is odd very odd especially when you're young men you're going through the wave you're going through it's just it's an odd thing i've never understood that but i think looking back at it that definitely led to the deterioration of our group because you know like can you ever look at someone the same again if you lent them a jacket like can they really talk spicy to you like can can they really say anything to you in their chest when you lent them a hoodie <laughs> it's almost impossible like can you come on man i'm not taking you seriously do you know what i mean i had to lend you trainers to, to, to go on a date you know what i mean like come on <laughs> so i don't think they ever saw each, i don't think they saw each other the same again the person that was asking for the thing probably felt bad for asking and felt less than and the person that was giving it felt weird that they were giving it you know what i mean and probably looked like how damn bad are you that you don't have a hoodie you know like that kind of i don't know i don't know i don't know don't get me wrong yeah i don't get into it too much um but yeah big up um big up 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 what are you saying here in the stream chat? Um, yo, big up Fashion Road, man. I appreciate you, brother. What are you saying here? Man said Lakeside from London. Oh, is he, are you going to exhibition to prove his riz already? Yeah, of course. Of course. Brother, like, <laughs> there was, it wasn't even like a, 
I wouldn't even say we didn't even view it as an expedition. It was just it was just like a thing you had to do. Like how's like how else are you gonna talk to anybody? How else are you gonna try and like I don't know, you just like how, how else are you meant to do it? Like the girls in that especially when I where I grew up, the girls in my area, they were not giving us any love because most of the girls in our area were dating older dudes that had cars and shit. What 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 are they gonna do with us? We riding down the street and BMXs or bikes that are stolen. Remember back in the day, like people would steal bikes in the area and you'd get like house paint. So you're like regular spray paint, just spray it white. So people will know it's, it's stolen. It's like, it's obviously been stolen. So these girls in the area are, date, are dating dudes with cars and we're trying to pull them with stolen bicycles. We had no chance. So we had to go far. We had to travel like Christopher Columbus. <laughs> we had to travel like Christopher Columbus. We had to take advantage of young women outside of our postcode who didn't know much English. <laughs> <laughs> if i hadn't seen black people before you know what i mean <laughs> that's how we had to win it's not it, i'm not i'm not proud of it but it, that was all i had <laughs> i was young i was rock hard <laughs> i was young and rock hard and needed it, and needed an outlet you know when you're like 16 you're in school and you just get a fucking <laughs> bonus oh, so hard it hurts you know it kind of makes you go into a state of shock that's how i was so i kind of needed an outlet you know what i mean i needed an outlet so i apologize to all those um you know young ladies in lakeside in fucking you know braintree you know in grays <laughs> in ilford in all these places that we went to to go and <laughs> hold something down and uh yeah good situation good situation i cannot lie man cannot lie man cannot lie moving on 